I want to briefly walk through an example, um, the, an applied example. This is actually something that we're doing to evaluate stocks. This is a decision tree that we've created at Raliant. Um, it's a much bigger decision tree. So here we're asking over 800 different yes or no questions. Uh, and it's based on around 125 different variables that we've selected as input data. And so the idea here is, again, a stock starts at the left of this chart. And through a series of questions that we ask about the stock, we work ourselves down to one of these so-called root nodes in the tree where we have a prediction about the stock's return over the next month. Um, these models are built by teams of quantitative researchers who select the methodology. Um, they help to code all of the questions into the system, but we've also got researchers with lots of domain knowledge. So people who are finance experts who are coming up with the best types of questions to ask. And so in some sense, this is just increasing our bandwidth because this is a model that we apply to 80,000 stocks in our equity universe. It's hard for human analysts uh, to evaluate companies with that degree of breadth. Uh, this is also a tree that incorporates knowledge of 35 years of uh, equity investing. So there's a lot of information that goes into these models. Now, zooming in, just so you can see what this process looks like, uh, I've selected a few branches here just to show you how a stock would flow through this model. Um, so uh, this is not the top of the tree, but we've worked ourselves down to this stage. Um, and we ask of a stock, given all that we know about the stock already, what's the stock's bankruptcy probability? And this is where we've actually got a team of people who created a model to try to estimate um, the likelihood that a company is going to go into bankruptcy. And based on the answer to that question, not surprisingly, a company with a high likelihood of bankruptcy is probably going to have a negative future return. So the prediction here is if it's got a high likelihood of bankruptcy, next month's return is expected to be negative 19%. If it's got low probability of bankruptcy, we go to the next branch. And so the question is, what is the stock price? Is it high or low? This is not asking if the stock is cheap or expensive. Um, this is asking, what is the number? What is the absolute dollar amount of the stock price? And it turns out that if a company's got a low stock price, that company is much more likely to be targeted by individual investors. They tend to conflate a low price with a cheap stock. And so low price stocks actually tend to be overvalued. And so the model is saying, if this is a company, even with a low probability of distress, if it's got a very low stock price, we expect that all things equal, it's gonna have negative returns. If it's got a higher stock price, so if the stock price isn't extremely low, if it's not a penny stock, um, then let's evaluate its price to sales ratio. And this is the question where we're asking, is this a cheap or expensive stock relative to fundamentals? And what the models realized is that if a stock has a low price to sales, if you can buy a dollar's worth of sales for less than a dollar, um, then this is an inexpensive stock. This is the well-known value effect. So the model recognizes stocks with low valuation ratios are more likely to have um, positive future returns. But the model understands that just because a stock has a high price to sales ratio, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad investment. So the next question is, What's the stock's operating profitability? And it's important to note the machine figured this out on its own. So the machine understands if it's an expensive stock, we've got to do more work. Is it a profitable company? Because we understand a profitable company is very good at turning sales into profits. So even if a company has a high price to sales ratio, if they're really good at converting those sales into earnings, it might still be a good investment. And so if it's got high profitability, the model again predicts positive returns. If it's got low profitability, we're gonna ask a bunch of other questions, but on average stocks with low probability that are very expensive um, tend not to be good investments. They tend to produce negative returns, but presumably if we keep working our way through the tree, we might ask and answer some questions that tell us this is a growth stock. And even though it's expensive now, even though it's not profitable, there are reasons to believe that that profitability is coming. So this is basically how the system works. And again, the idea is the better questions that we can provide to the model, the better the predictions are going to be and the more effective the investment process is. And I'll emphasize, um, this is just a tool. So this is helping us to evaluate stocks. Uh, we're not letting these decision trees completely dictate what a portfolio looks like. We're just using this as a way to evaluate tens of thousands of stocks that we could never do if we had to have um, human beings unassisted looking at those companies individually. 
So hopefully this has given you a sense for some of the promise of machine learning, what it might be able to achieve in investments, some of the challenges that make that difficult in the domain of finance, and um, some of the specific ways that we're trying to overcome that.